Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I am Nisha Poddar. Now today we are going to focus in this era of digital revolution on the digital currency and how it's picking up pace. Now Reserve Bank of India has also introduced the concept of CBDC or Central Bank Digital Currency. So will it be a game changer and what will be the impact on the transactions as well as capital management by all participants in the economy? Let's find out from our uh, expert panelists today. Let me welcome on the show Cyril Shroff, the managing partner at Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas and Neeraj Gambhir, the group executive at Axis Bank. Gentlemen, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Neeraj, let me begin by asking you, as a banker, what do you think is the digital currency, while at a nascent stage world over right now, likely to become the currency of the future? So over the last about four or five thousand years, we've seen money change in several forms. We started with, you know, animal hides, cowrie shells, moved into metals, commodities, and then paper money. I think digital currency is the next phase. This is how exactly Reserve Bank has described it. That you know, as everything else is becoming digital, money is also becoming digital. So CBDCs could potentially be the next form of money as we know it. All right, that's a big statement coming in. Cyril Shroff, do you agree with, uh, concur with what uh, Neeraj said? And what are the highlights of uh, the RBI's concept note and the way they have designed it? I would certainly uh, agree with uh, Neeraj that uh, this is the next phase of evolution, just as everything is becoming digital. Yes. That a, a digital currency is probably the next step. Uh, I'm not so sure whether it will, like in the case of prior evolutions of money, substitute whatever was the then status quo or not. We are more likely to see kind of coexistence uh, of the digital currency versus the kind of prevalent paper money and others. But, you know, that only time will tell. So where we are today is that the RBI has put out a concept paper after the working group was constituted about uh, two years ago. Uh, and the uh, concept paper has been put out in order to prepare the thinking of the market. Uh, RBI has announced in the report itself that they're going to be running a few pilots and that they are going to, that this paper is put out so that the market can start getting familiar with uh, the whole idea of a digital currency. And it has been, it's a brilliantly written paper. And it I think it puts out what are its key motivations, some of the design choices that have been made and why they have been made. The, of the, the purpose that has been set out in terms of the motivations, they've set out six motivations, which include cost reduction, cashless economy, ease of cross-border remittances, financial inclusion. And last, I'm not sure that is necessarily the last, is that it is an alternative uh, to crypto, uh, or at least to provide a, a kind of another another way of thinking uh, in the, instead of the private currency or the crypto assets that uh, are kind of so topical, but will come with their risk. So that's the that's the broad uh, where we are today. That nothing has been introduced here as, as as yet. It's just a concept paper, but I'm pretty sure it will result after legal changes are made. It will mm -hmm. result. In in a new idea. Uh, so, uh, so, Cyril Shroff, do you think that it is a uh, regulated and government's answer to the rise of private crypto? Uh, but certainly one of the reasons is that, but I think it has a standalone reason as well. Yes. Uh, for instance, for all the other reasons that we mentioned, because it's just a digital version of a fiat currency. Right. So taking forward this discussion, of course, uh, Neeraj, uh, we know that uh, the digital currency will have the sovereign backing, but banks will still be the intermediaries for servicing the CBDCs. That's the kind of concept and design that has been laid out by our central bank. What does this mean for the banking system? And how do you think the different approach between wholesale and retail banking under CBDC will work? So uh, I think uh, much of the detail is yet to be seen because the conceptually they are saying that there will be intermediaries involved in the issuance and distribution of CBDC, uh, even though central bank is the one who's going to be issuing it. Uh, I, my, my guess is that it could potentially take a, some kind of a wallet format where you're, you're currently using wallets for uh, you know, commercial bank money, you're eventually going to be using wallets for central bank money as well. 
uh, and uh, you know I, I do envisage a situation where once this is introduced and uh, banks are the ones who are actually doing the account opening because it's envisaged to be an account based you know cbdc bank banks are the ones who are doing the kyc aml account opening uh, ensuring that the wallets are given and effectively those are the wallets which are being used maybe integrating those wallets into the existing uh, you know, applications that we have, the mobile apps that we have, so that CBDC becomes another way for you to actually make the payments, uh, just as you do it with IMPS and UPI, for example, currently. Uh, on the wholesale side, I think the, uh, the, the, uh, the way the, uh, the design is thought about is slightly different. Uh, it is basically supposed to be a direct sort of holdings uh, through the Reserve Bank, and wholesale side could actually be uh, m more used for interbank payments and settlements and settlements between the corporates. Um, one uh, impact that we still need to see, and I think this, is, this will depend upon how the, the design is done, how it's rolled out, is that whether wholesale CBDC will have any impact on the current account balances. I think that the, the paper does talk about that, that we need to be mindful of the impact of this on the current account balances, because current account balances, if you know, uh, are currently also unremunerated. No interest is paid on current account balances, yes. and effectively works like a works like a, works like a zero a zero payment sort of account. Uh, so CBDC will be also something similar. So we need to see whether in wholesale space there is going to be a competition between the CBDC and the current account facilities that the uh, that the banks give. Um, right. Like I said, much of the detail is yet to be seen. Sure. These are the broad concepts that uh, that are being talked about in the concept paper. Right. Uh, so, Neeraj, one important question will be how much will be the push by the banking system? What is in it for the banking system uh, as far as benefit is concerned, apart from just being a service provider, to really push it so that the adoption is much faster? Because once the money is converted into CBDC, it doesn't account for your deposits. Uh, and on the other hand, you can't use it as a raw material for your business, while the deposit holder also does not get any interest out of the CBDC holding. So how prevalent do you think it will be without the, these kind of benefits to the banking system and to the customers? Be mindful of. First of all, CBDC is being envisaged as an replacement or other something similar to the physical cash currency that you hold yes. it is not supposed to be a replacement of your bank account right uh, and as far as the physical cash currency is concerned there is a whole a lot of uh, you know involvement of uh, the banking system in terms of distribution currency chess management you know uh, atm management etc cetera, etc cetera. and all of these things actually cost money for the banking system. So if we can actually move uh, the retail uh, sort of uh, users to using digital currency, then the system as a whole benefits, the banking system as a whole benefits because those costs can potentially come down quite a lot. Right. Uh, the second aspect of this is that from a user perspective, from a retail investor perspective, they're basically now, instead of holding money in their wallets, they're gonna probably be holding money in a form of an app into their mobile phones. So the convenience value actually increases. Uh, and uh, CBDC, like any physical currency, is effectively a central bank liability. So effectively, there is no, you know, credit risk that you take of a bank or, you know, the risk that if tomorrow, if the bank was not there, what will happen to your money? Hmm. Uh, it is being envisaged uh, that the retail CBDC, and I think wholesale as well, is going to be non-interest bearing instrument. Pretty yes. much like the cash that you carry with yes, today. Yes. So in that sense, there is not going to be a material difference between the cash that you carry in your wallet or your yes, purse yes. and the CBDC that is being thought through. So right. I think these are some of the aspects which will actually have a determination. I don't think RBI is thinking of a push in that sense. Uh, the idea is that you give customers an option. Yes. Those who want to use a digital form of cash. Yes, got it, Neeraj. Right. So, yes, it. yes. So it's an option. Let me delve deeper uh, into that after a very short break. Sanil Shroff, uh, Neeraj Kampir, hold on to your thoughts on this very interesting discussion on understanding the digital currency of the future. Stay tuned to Big D.
Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the scope of CBDC or the future of digital currency. Cyril Shroff, we have touched upon a few aspects on the mechanism and what it can potentially do and you think that it will coexist with other forms of currency. I want to understand that if we really were to have a borderless currency across the world which can help in cross-border transactions faster, less expensive and remittances, can digital currency really take that place and what are the regulations and international coordination that is required for that to happen? So uh, I think the short answer to your question is, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, but there are a lot of steps in between, uh, sort of reaching from where we are today till then. Uh, for a borderless world where digital currency will work uh, uh, seamlessly, I think firstly each country will need to have their own version of a CBDC. Uh, the rules in relation to technology protocols will have to be worked out. Tax uh, and uh, the relevant foreign exchange laws of each country will have to be uh, aligned for this. So uh, I, I don't know what point of time in future it will happen, but if every country in the world or every currency in the world has this option, eventually this will get there because this, or this will result in the ability to make direct payments outside the banking, banking system. And of course that will carry its own risks as well. So necessary KYC uh, 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 and AML protocols will also have to be evolved. And a lot of it will depend on the design choices that have been made. So in the concept paper, RBI talks of three uh, design choices. Uh, first, wholesale versus retail. I think they will do both. Uh, then whether direct, hybrid, or indirect, I think they've made a choice on going indirect. And a token-based or an account-based, it's likely that retail will be token-based and wholesale will be account-based. So all of this will finally influence the outcome. But there are uh, it's, it's a long journey with many regulatory and technological choices that have to be made uh, in the journey. But in an ideal state, the answer to your question is yes. All right. Uh, so Neeraj, uh, as a banker, what do you think about the cross-border transactions and the remittances bit? And uh, how can uh, the digital currency really make that much smoother and less expensive? Do you think it's uh, designed, the RBI's concept paper has been designed in that direction? And do you think that the international coordination is really taking place on that front? Or on the flip side, do you think that while it is only mirroring rupee, every country is just mirroring their own currency, and therefore the digital currency will also have the same forex hedging, the same remittance, um, you know, uh, blockages and going through financial institutions and being, uh, you know, stopped by FEMA and various other regulations. So to start off with a couple of points, firstly, uh, you know, as far as the design choices are concerned, clearly uh, easing off the international payments is one of the, you know, one of the things that is there at the back of the mind as far as the concept paper is concerned. Uh, it is actually, it can potentially be one of the major use cases for having a CBDC um, besides potentially financial inclusion. Uh, in the context of CBDC, there are approximately 100 odd countries which are currently thinking about experimenting, you know, wondering about how to go about it. And all of this is in some senses, uh, you know, being sort of uh, in, in some senses being mediated by BIS. Uh, which, as you know, is central bank, central bank. Um, uh, so there is a, there is some level of kind of thinking at each other and looking at each other and figuring out what other banks are doing that's happening across the central banks. Uh, there will need to be interoperability for it to have for us to have a smooth cross-border payment ex you know experience. But that is something that will evolve over a period of time. The one uh, you know uh, uh, def the, the one sort of defining feature is that we'll still have multiple currencies even in the cdbc framework so which means that if you you know if you want to if you're going from india to say for example singapore and you want to convert you still will have to convert they will need they will need to be a, you know they will be a need to uh, make that foreign exchange transaction but hopefully in the context of cbdc and given the fact these are electronic you know instruments now uh, life will be a lot more easier, smoother, and less time-consuming. 
Uh, as an international traveler, Neeraj, I can give you a feedback uh, that, you know, it's very difficult and an expensive proposition. And I was hoping that the new forms of currency will ease that. But if you are going to have different currencies, even in digital form, and the similar forex exchange uh, issues, uh, then uh, we have to see how this really develops. But one aspect which, Neeraj, I know that you've been reading a lot on, is it really a half-hearted uh, attempt by the central banks across the world uh, to really fight back the right rise of crypto and i'll tell you that it's half-hearted i say that because it's going to be regulated still it will be less democratic uh, while cryptos really aimed for a real borderless uh, digital currency you know you know in that sense i i don't think cbdc's are a complete replica of cryptocurrencies or, or a replacement, complete replacement of cryptocurrencies, right? Because cryptocurrencies by definition are supposed to have no intermediaries, a trustless sort of a system, a decentralized system. A CBDC would still be, uh, you know, it will still be owned effectively or it's a liability of a central bank and therefore the trust issues at the center of CBDC. I think what the governments, including Reserve Bank of India and, you know, uh, Government of India are trying to do is that to provide a more sort of safer alternative to public, uh, which is obviously wanting to now use digital currencies in one form or the other. Yes. Uh, CBDC, because it will have a central government backing or it's a government backed instrument, I yes. think has that, you know, there has that ring of safety to it, yes. which probably the cryptos do not have, right? Right. So that is the, that is a good, uh, that is a significant allure of CBDC if I may use it. Yes. But clearly, you know, it, it lacks the uniformity and, and the fact that there is complete decentralization or at least there's a theoretical complete decentralization that exists in the crypto world. All right. And uh, Cyril Shroff, uh, another ethos based on which digital currency has been really conceptualized is to, uh, you know, replicate the cash economy into digital economy. In fact, no interest rate and uh, anonymity are some of those features which gives it a proto digital prototype of cash that you hold in your purse. Do you think uh, it will solve that purpose? Uh, because, uh, you know, cash economy, uh, where we saw uh, the whole demonetization also that we went through, was to really curtail the cash economy, which is used for tax avoidance and for fraudulent activities. So, uh, will it be completely anonymous? Uh, I don't know, because uh, one thing that one does know about technology is that there is always a digital footprint somewhere. Uh, but uh, based on the technological choices uh, that are made, I think a high degree of anonymity uh, uh, will be achieved. And I think uh, hopefully technology will help uh, solve that problem. On your second point about interest, I think it's an important distinction to bear in mind and both from a crypto comparison or even otherwise, is that not to think about this as an asset in which you know value goes up and down. But it is really just a digital equivalent of a fiat currency. Like one rupee in a cashless, uh, in a in a paper form, should be equal to one rupee in a digital form. That's yes. the way to think. Right, uh, but I would say as as a user. Uh, I think uh, money in my bank account, then how I can transfer through various wallets, uh, it's much more effective in uh, getting the benefit of the interest that I get on my bank account, however small it may be, uh, Neeraj would know. But it will still be beneficial in the wrong run rather than having CBDC uh, if that were to happen for online transactions. My final question to you, Cyril Shroff, what is the make, mix, missed opportunity here that we are looking at from the concept so i'm probably a little early to uh, assess whether there are missed opportunities or not and these are really kind of flip sides of the design choices that have been made for example not having it as interest bearing one could ask the question as to whether that means that have you really uh, missed out an opportunity to uh, to sort of have a lot of innovation in the banking system because had there been interest uh, on a digital currency, there would have been a competition between bank deposits and this, and that would have forced the banks to innovate or not. It's a question, it's a kind of a moot question to ask. That's uh, I think there's a trade-off in terms of uh, really, you know, mon monetary policy transmission and uh, bank deposits. Uh, so, the, I mean, uh, these are really...
really counterpoints of each of the design choices that have been made. Yes. Uh, and we made uh, as we get to the next level of detail. For example, when the when the, tech, the exact technology choices will be made, there will be a number of uh, you know trade offs, and there could be some missed opportunity there. Right. Uh, there as well. So. I think a little premature to assess uh, what are the missed opportunities. Yes. But in any innovation like this, there are always missed opportunities. All right. So we are just in the beginning of uh, the digital currency journey. Uh, but uh, Neera, just one word uh, answer. Uh, in your view, how soon uh, would we get rolling on this? Because the technological uh, you know, innovation also is required at the back end of the banks for the system to work. Uh, I'm expecting over the next six months, we will have some kind of pilot rollout where the banks will get to experiment yes. uh, in a limited way, in a closed loop way. And yes. then depending upon how the pilot goes, the rollout could happen. Remember, China has been doing the pilot right. for the last two years now, right? So right. Uh, it could be longer journey as well. All right. But uh, nonetheless, the journey has begun. Uh, the future of currency could be the digital currency. That's uh, the view of the house. Thank you so much, Cyril Shroff and Neeraj Gambhir, for joining us on this interesting discussion on Big Deal. With that, uh, it's a, a, a thank you so much to all our viewers and also happy Diwali to all our viewers and our panelists. Uh, it's going to be a festive season. Thoroughly enjoy yourself and keep watching CNBC TV 18. Thanks so much.